Are you an entrepreneur or a business owner? Today, I'm going to give you five ways to know the difference. Hey, hey out there, it's Lauren Powers, business and marketing coach, sharing stories of bad entrepreneurs turned profitable business owners and how you can learn from our stories to help you grow in your own business. These are real stories, y'all, so it's going to get real spicy. Pull up. Let's get it. a good one today it's a good one today so if you're driving I mean, you may even want to pull over and take some notes because i'm giving y'all the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner okay an entrepreneur and a business owner there's a difference there's a difference there's a there's a hustle culture that a lot of times is uh, attached to somebody who calls themselves an entrepreneur I also want to say sometimes we call ourselves that for clout or just to say that we have some. There's all kinds of different labels. I strive to be the owner, founder, CEO, business owner. That's what I strive to be. I'm done with the hustle culture. I'm done with the hamster wheel. I'm going to give y'all five key differences between entrepreneurs and business owners, okay? Difference number one, an entrepreneur gets money. A business owner keeps money. Hello, is this thing on? Does it work? An entrepreneur gets money. A business owner keeps money. Okay? So what I mean by that, who out there, you know, you're driving, you're with the kids, you're doing your routine. We all know how to get a check, y'all. We all know how to bring a business to life. We all have things that we've birthed, correct? But when it comes to actually making that thing work for our benefit, making that thing feed our retirement, or keeping it so that we can draw a salary, that's where most of us fall off and we still keep the business, even though it's not providing us the main things that we want it to and we don't actually fix it. That's when you elevate into that business owner founder because you've realized the importance of keeping your money and generating a profit. Okay, so how I knew I had graduated, I said, oh my God, holy shit, I have money in the bank. Oh my goodness, it's the first of the month and I'm not moving shit around to try to make stuff happen, right? Remember, entrepreneurs get money, business owners keep it. Which one are you? Which one are you? Here's the second thing. Usually, entrepreneurs are all about hustling and working and just having 12,000 jobs and working 90 hours. How many of y'all out there know someone who quit their nice, cushy, 40-hour-a-week job that had all kinds of benefits and shit only to work 80-plus hours a week, stressed to the max on an idea that they're trying to make work? Or they brag on it. Oh, I got a business. You know, I own my own business, yada, yada, yada. While your friend over here is working at IBM, Coke, Pfizer, wherever it is that they work, not doing anything after 5 o'clock, okay, and their weekends are free. A lot of times we tra- trade out this life because we think that there's uh, uh, something better or the grass is greener, but the hustle culture is tired. Y'all, I'm 40. I've been 40 now for about three months. So I feel like I just, I know so much, you know, about, about being in my forties and how that whole, like, if I'm working and it's not, it's not paying my baby's uh, tuition, if it's not paying my 401k or my IRA that I'm trying to submit for the year or whatever it is, I don't need to do that. What I got to hustle for? I've already done it. I already have the bad stories. I already have the loss of money. I already have the loans that were associated with all these other bad ideas or things that I did not make work, right? Instead, I just rather focus on retirement. So it's either you hustle over here as an entrepreneur or business owners, we think about retirement. We think about what can what will we be doing? in our 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, that brings us joy, that also pays us. Because it doesn't make sense to say none of us are going to work like after the age of 50 or 60. No, your brain will go to mush. So what are the things that, how are you setting yourself up for retirement? Or are you just going to work every day, turning on the lights, opening the door, shutting it down and doing the same thing over and over again? Okay. So it's the second difference, right? First difference was getting money versus keeping money. Second difference is hustle versus retire, okay? So third, 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 third. And this kind of goes into the retirement portion. Entrepreneurs only work forward. Business owners work backwards. Listen to what I'm saying. Entrepreneurs have an idea, they're at the race, you know, the, the gun fires, boom, you go, you keep running around the track, okay? Entre- uh, business owners will look at the track, we look at the competition. 
we look at how many angles, how, you know, what's the shortest way to get around this track fast, right? And we work backwards from there. We plan, we sharpen the ax, we execute, as opposed to just firing out the gate. Any of us can do that, right? So when you have an idea or currently in your business right now, how much money do you need to make this year in order to give the 20% the or whatever you're feeding into your retirement and pay the salaries that you wanna make as a business owner? Or are you getting dividends? Working backwards helps with that. If I did, if I had thought about this before, I probably would not have opened the gym and some of the other businesses that I had done before. In no way was I thinking about selling it, and nobody was I thinking about franchising it, and no way was I even thinking about ever stopping working. Like, what happens if I just decide to just not do this one day? Never worked myself out of my own business, right? So again, if you are an entrepreneur in a business right now, think backwards. What do the next five years look like? What do the next five years look like? And how can you start to scale out of that while not having to work in the business every day? Some people don't think about that, all right? So the fourth thing that I want to say is for entrepreneurs, this may be sensitive for some of y'all, I think ego is, is, is involved for a lot of people that label themselves as entrepreneur. For those that are business owners, most of us will own things that you may not even know, or most of us will have, you know, different pockets that we've made investments that you, that it doesn't matter if you know or not, because all that matters is that I'm living comfortably. I can vacation when I want, or, you know, I'm creating the life that I want to live, whether, you know, whatever stage that is. Some people want you to know, Hey, listen, this is mine. I need my name plate on the door. I need, I need you to, you know, salute me as I walk in. Hell, even give me a parking, parking spot. As for me, you call me the motherfucking janitor. I do not care. I just need the check. I need the check to clear. I need to arrive on time. That's really all I care about. And if I'm a silent investor or whatever it is, I could give two craps about your thoughts on, uh, you know, my image. And I think when we're entrepreneurs and bi business owners alike, a lot of our identity is wrapped up into the businesses that we open or how we're viewed, if you're able to take your identity out of some of that, take the ego out and focus on the end result, focus on the profit, that road to entrepreneur, to, to, to business ownership may be a lot easier if you remove your emotion and your ego out of it, right? So again, that's my fourth difference for entrepreneurs. I feel like there's some ego up in there, Right. And for business owners, I feel like sometimes they're more focused on the result, not the title, not the recognition, not this was my idea, not, oh, my God, give me credit. None of that. All we want to do is to get the check and hopefully not have to work a 40 hour work week. Right. <laughs> like ultimately. OK, so the last difference, in my opinion, is difference number five is I feel that most entrepreneurs, especially in the beginning stages, we're on that hamster wheel. We're on the hamster wheel, we're spinning, we're running, we're like a little puppy on a treadmill with a stake in front of us, we're running. We don't know how to stop. And if you think about the, the visualization of a hamster wheel, you're going in circles with no end. Whereas business owners, we're thinking about what's the recipe? What is the system that needs to be in place so I can scale and get out? So you need to graduate from that hamster wheel into someone that thinks systematically, more efficiently. It could be you need to hire a coach. It could be like I, like I did and me and my husband did. We had to hire somebody, someone to help us really understand what it takes to be successful in the industry that we that we picked, right? So. If you think think about yourself, your little body on a hamster wheel versus vacationing like you want, staying on a beach while your business stands on its own two legs, you would think and move differently and you would associate yourself with folks that can help you get to that next level. So if anything, if you take away anything from today, what steps are you gonna take to graduate from that entrepreneur, that hustle culture, and to someone that has a business that stands on its own two legs and is proud to be, to stand in that owner founder position and has totally earned it, right? You pick, you got choices. See y'all soon. The Bad Entrepreneur Podcast. Podcast. After all, we can't run from my past. Let's talk about it. Bad Entrepreneur Podcast. Let's talk about it. The Bad Entrepreneur Podcast.